What is going on you guys? Welcome to another video. As you can see, we got a little bit of a different background going here. Literally outside of my church right now, we have a nice gazebo set up outside the church in the parking lot. And we have like this nice little garden, which is kind of cool. So we got the gazebo in the garden and nobody really comes out here that much. And I don't know, it's a beautiful day. So I'm gonna come out here, just chill for a little bit and talk to you guys about how the Lord will provide. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I got my phone here, got some notes, don't wanna miss anything. But you guys, the Lord will provide in our lives. This kinda of goes in tangent with my last video about how we need to wait on the Lord, but understand when we wait on the Lord, he will provide always in the end. You guys, if it's in accordance with his will, his plan, his purpose for your life, and if, again, the desires of your heart are in accordance to these things, he will provide them to you. You just need to wait, though. You need to wait on his perfect timing. You need to wait when the time is right. You know, we want things so fast and so immediate, but again, we need to understand that things happen in accordance to the Lord's perfect timing. Not our timetable, but his. So just remember that. And you guys, many people right now in their life, even myself included, may feel like you know they're not where they want to be at in life right we may feel like we're behind we're not progressing as fast or as much as we want to we're not you know maybe where we want to be at in our level of successes in our finances relationships maybe our careers whatever the case may be right we just feel behind and you guys a lot of this can derive from the fact of you know what we see going on around us right what we see on social media what we see you know maybe in our friends our family right other people our age right it may be a number of things but you guys a lot of it is just for me personally is what i see on my phone and you know what i see on social media you know it's always a comparison battle at the end of the day right comparison is the thief of joy you guys and we need to understand that the lord has created each and every one of us on purpose and for a purpose and he has a plan for each and every one of us that is specific and individualized for all of us so i want to encourage you despite what you may see you know what again on social media or you know around you family friends whatever the case may be understand that the lord has a plan and a purpose for you and he will do whatever he can for you to walk that out right it's a it's up to us if we're going to walk out what the Lord is calling us to do, if we're going to surrender to him, if we're going to yield to the Holy Spirit, if we're going to be obedient to God and his word, right, for us to be able to fully and completely walk out everything he has in store for us and to receive all the blessings he has in store for us as well. So I want to encourage you with that. And you guys, comparison again is the thief of joy. You guys, whatever we see around us, understand that it can be misleading even at times, right? What we see on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, whatever the case may be, right? These things can be misleading because they may seem unattainable, you know, for our exact circumstances and situation in the moment. And it can be misleading because you don't know how these people you know, got to where they are specifically, right? We don't know all the details behind it. And we also don't know, you know, the efforts it took, how much time it took and the behind the scenes and all these different, you know, factors that play into it. We just see a lot of the times the after effect or, you know, we see, you know, the highlight reel of everything, but we don't see the things that took place in order to attain it. And honestly, the things behind it, right? A lot of things that we see, maybe, you know, materialism, things like that, you know, that we see people our age, you know, are attaining at such a young age or whatever the case may be, or such a high value or have such a high net worth or whatever the case may be, they might not have attained certain things either in a moral way, right? You know, you see like OnlyFans models making, you know, tens if not hundreds of thousand dollars a month you know, from doing OnlyFans. So I say that to mean the fact that we don't know, right, the means behind how people attain certain things we may want in life. Or, you know, again, even if it is even moral, right, and things like that. So there's plenty of different factors. And again, it all comes down to comparison. And when we start comparing ourselves to one another, understand it's gonna steal our joy. And it's gonna steal the things that the Lord has specifically 
for us and has purpose for us and the blessings he has in store for us as well. So we can't compare ourselves to other people. We need to focus on the Lord and understand that he has great things in store for our lives. And, you know, not to that's not to bash anybody else. Right. Bless them. You know, Every, you know, bless them. You shouldn't ever be jealous of somebody else from for what they have whatever the case may be, right? But also understand, but understand the fact that, you know, the Lord has great things in store for you as well. So keep that in mind. And scripture says in Jeremiah 29, 11, you guys heard it before, I'm sure, you know, it's a very common verse, but the Lord says he has plans for all of us, right? His plans are to prosper us and not to harm us, but to give us a hope in the future. And it says, I'll read it word for word. It says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord, Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. You guys, many times in our lives we feel behind as well because we want to achieve a greater level of success, you know, a greater income. Whatever, you want to get a greater, you know, position in our job, in our career, whatever the case may be, right? It can be other things as well. But one of the reasons and one of the things I've learned in life re somewhat recently actually is the fact that, you know, the Lord's not going to bless us with more things if we can't steward the things we have already well. Understand, we need to steward well what we have been given by the Lord and make sure that we are mastering that and completing that before the Lord can bless us with even more things, right? The Lord's not going to give us anything that we cannot handle. He's not going to overwhelm us with something that is maybe too much pressure or too much to, you know, take in, whatever the case may be. He's not going to give us more than we can handle at the end of the day. And we need to truly steward well with what we've been given. A lot of times we could take for granted or overlook all the blessings, all the things we've been given in this season, right? In the seasons leading up to where we're at now. And we need to make sure we're stewarding them well before God can bring a greater increase in our life. Because, you know, um, to whom much is given, much is required. And I want to encourage you, steward well with what you have in this season. And really think about that. I know I had to. And I had to come back and take a realization like, wow, this is really true. And am I mastering, am I perfecting simply the things in my life that I have been given up to this point? And what the Lord is calling me to, you know, deal with in the in the season of my life so really think about that again to whom much is given much is required to steward well what you have right now right and you guys understand that when you are fully surrendered to god he will provide what you need and when you need it again in his perfect timing so i'll say it again when you are fully surrendered to God and walking in accordance to his Holy Spirit, being obedient to the word, surrendered to him fully, understand that he will give you what you need and when you need it in his perfect timing, you guys. Understand that God is outside of time, right? And he will give it to us whenever we need it and whenever he sees best and whenever he sees fits best for us in our lives. So just continue to trust in him in the end of the, at the end of the day. And when we ask the Lord for the things we need, obey his word and are surrendered to him, we will receive what it is we desire as well. It says in scripture that the Lord gives us the desires of our hearts. Now, if we're desiring something wrong, something that goes contradictory against the word, or is, again, in contrary to the word of God and his plans, his will for our life, then we may not receive it. Right. But again, if it's in accordance to his will, his plans for your life, he will give us the desires of our hearts. Trust and believe. And again, we just need to walk in obedience to him, walk in accordance to his righteousness. And yeah, just yield to the Holy Spirit daily. And we will see these fruits in our life in his perfect timing. And again, while you wait, I want to encourage you. That's one thing that we, you know, so we talked about, you know, how the Lord basically will provide in our lives. But what do we do in the waiting season, right? Well, in the waiting season, continue to do what you know best to do. Continue to do the things that you know the Lord is calling you to do during this season while you wait. Don't just sit back and be idle and do nothing. Continue to do the next best thing, what the Lord is calling you to do in this season, right? It says in scripture, faith without works is dead. So we can have faith that we will receive the things that we are praying for, we are asking for. But we also, you know, have to have works behind it to back it up as well. And you guys, while we're waiting, continue to pray, continue to seek, continue to knock, continue to ask and believe 
that the Lord will provide it, right? He will provide it again in his perfect timing, but we can't just sit back and do nothing. So continue to do the next best thing in this season, what you know is right to do and what the Lord is calling you to do during this season. And he will bring the increase. He will bring the fruits, the harvest when the time is right. Trust and believe. And I want to share a story with you with something I'm going through in this my own season right now in my life. So when it comes to finances, one of the things I think a lot of people don't realize, and one of the things I've learned in my life, and I've seen it happen time and time again, so I know it's real, I know it's true, I know it works, is the fact that when it comes to a financial blessing in our life, the Lord will provide for us. He'll bless us, you know, He will sustain us, He will bless us immeasurably, and you know, He will take care of us, right? More than we even need. But one thing that I've learned is that when you are, you know, hoping for, praying for, anticipating a financial breakthrough like basically immediately in your life or you know soon in your life right one of the things I've learned is about the importance of sowing sowing a seed now what do I mean by that so for a financial breakthrough one thing I learned is that when you sow a seed basically meaning like you you give money to for what I do I sow a seed into you know my church or into ministry it doesn't necessarily have to be you know your specific church but I mean why wouldn't I like do my own church or why wouldn't you I guess but you know just sowing a seed you're you're basically giving money right and entrusting the Lord that he is gonna provide a harvest based off that seed so basically how it works is and I've seen it in my life before where I would sow like a hundred dollar seed I would give like a hundred dollars to my church I would give like a, a, an offering right a seed to my church and literally, you know, praying for and expecting for, you know, a greater harvest, great, a greater harvest in the end. And so, for example, I sowed a hundred dollar seed and hundred or a hundred dollar offering, whatever you want to call it. And I literally received like a seven hundred and fifty dollar blessing within a matter of the same week, you guys. Now it's and it's crazy because it's like an all it's all a supernatural thing i can't really describe it too much besides the fact that when it's simply an illustration of sowing and reaping you've heard that before in scripture and you guys when you sow uh the lord will provide a harvest to you and basically your harvest will be more or less along the lines of the seed that you sow. Now, this may be new to you, this may be a new thing, but it's something that I've learned within the past couple of years actually, but it's worked in my life and I've seen it happen time and time again. When you are stepping out in faith, right? And that's what it requires, stepping out in faith and sowing a seed, excuse me, understand that the Lord will provide a harvest, right? Because what you're saying essentially too, is, and it kind of ties along with uh, tithing is the fact that when you tithe, meaning giving your first fruits, giving your first 10% basically financially of your income, right? Um, you're basically entrusting in the Lord with your finances. You're saying, Lord, I trust you with my finances and, you know, I'm willing to lay this, you know, 10% down for you and, you know, to trust you with it because I put you, Lord, over money and I entrust you, Lord, over money and, you know, anything the world may, you know, provide to us. So simply you're saying you're trusting God with your finances when you do this. And when you sow a seed and you step out in faith and sow a seed, no matter how big or how small, I guarantee you're going to see a harvest in your life. Basically in accordance to the seed you sow, more or less, right? And how I see it, it's interesting because when you sow a seed, I always like to say the Lord will give you a harvest and it will be with interest, right? So for example, I sowed, you know, $100 seed and then the harvest I received was at $750. I sown, you know, a $1,000 seed and I actually received a new car literally within the same month. How crazy is that? But when you sow, you should sow, you know, not will, not grudgingly or anything like that, but in expectancy that the Lord will provide and that you're trusting it to Him, right? And so I'm in a season right now of my life. I'm going long with this. I'm sorry, but it's important because I know it works and it's a real thing and try it out. I encourage you if you're expecting or, you know, would like a financial breakthrough in your life, like basically like immediately or quickly, sow a seed. I'm telling you, I'm not wrong when it comes to this stuff and you can t test me. 
test me, honestly. Try it and see it work for yourself. I guarantee it will. And if you don't believe me again, just try it yourself and you'll see. But anyway, I'm in a season right now where I, I'm hoping for a financial breakthrough. You know, I would like to have, you know, a raise. I would like to have, you know, uh, increase, you know, um, in my income, right? And so I'm sowing a large seed. Literally, actually, the day that I'm filming this, which is Wednesday evening, I'm sowing a seed today. And um, yeah, it's going to be a large seed. And uh, in expectancy, you know, the Lord will provide a breakthrough, you know, and, you know, that he will do the miraculous. He will do a great work. And again, it's like all supernatural thing that the Lord does. And he does it to bless us, provide for us. And it's actually shows, too, just like your level of faith. Right. So anyway, sow a seed if you want an immediate financial breakthrough see what happens and your breakthrough will be basically in accordance to the seed you sow right so the larger the seed basically the larger you know the harvest right so anyway all to say that the lord will provide so that ties along with it but you guys understand too that a lot of us play the victim mentality like oh why am i in this season of my life or you know why do i feel stuck why you know nothing's happening and don't get me wrong i felt that way plenty of times and you know still times to this day i feel that way but understand that the lord is for you and he's not against you right despite what your situation is despite where you're at understand that when you trust in the lord do the things that we talked about he will provide for you right it's a matter of waiting continuing to pray continue continuing to you know ask seek knock and you will eventually find and he will provide and you guys if it's something really desperate one thing i highly encourage is fasting fasting is so crazy again i can do a whole video i actually did a whole video on that it's one of my first videos so if you want to scroll and look it's one of my first videos just the importance of fasting and praying when you really need something from the lord or really are desiring something for the lord fast i'm telling you go on a water fast do you know food and water whatever you you know feel most comfortable with but do something that's going to really challenge you honestly and you know just do a fast you know i did a, a five-day fast and you know saw great breakthroughs in my life because of it from prayers that i was praying and hoping to receive answers for it, which i did so fast 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 and the lord will provide for you that way as well and again god is for you he's not against you his plans that are prosper you not to harm you but give you a hope in the future like we talked about and have faith in the lord and not in your circumstances when we rely on you know the situations around us the circumstances we're in and you know are so honed in focused on it and you know are dwelling on it we're basically saying that i don't have faith in you lord and you know i don't trust you lord that's basically what we're saying at the end of the day so we need to trust in the lord have faith in him and believe that he will bring breakthrough he will bring uh he will provide the miraculous and he will do what it is we're hoping for him to do and what he plans to do in our life so i want to end with a scripture as well just to leave you with some hope you guys in romans 15 13 it says may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You guys understand that the Lord is going to take care of us. He's going to bless us immeasurably, more than we even know. But again, we need to be yielded to the Holy Spirit. We need to be surrendered fully to God to receive all the great things and all the blessings that He has in store for us and to walk out the will, the purpose, the plans He has for us as well. The Lord will provi provide and bless us no matter what but if you really want to live in accordance to him and do what he's calling you to do and you know not your own desires right when you lay down your life pick up your cross and surrender to him he will do so many great things in your life i've seen it in my own life and i'm living it out now i'm a walking and living testimony of it and we walk by faith and not by sight so understand that when we have faith and believe in the lord for all these things he will truly provide so i love you guys hope you enjoyed the video Hope you enjoyed the nice ambiance. Um, yeah, it's very nice outside in this little gazebo. But if you guys like the channel or like the video, I encourage you to like, share, comment, subscribe. Do all the things, you guys, so we can reach more souls for the kingdom. And, yeah, win more souls for Jesus Christ. So I love you guys, and I look forward to seeing you in the next 
video. Adios.